an example tutorial. Anne builds computers and sells them. She builds a gaming computer and a basic computer, and she can make up to 80 computers per month. Now she puts in 240 hours per month working on these computers. It takes her six hours to make a gaming computer and two hours to make the basic one. Now she profits $120 on each of the gaming computers sold and $80 on each of the basic computers sold. Now business is going well, that is, she sells all the computers she makes, and given that, how many of each computer should she make in order to maximize her profit? Again, let's not get anxious about all those words. We'll just break it down into little parts. To start, let's try to determine what our main variables are going to be. So we look, and in the end, we see that we're supposed to determine how many of each kind of computer that Anne should make. And as we look at the question, everything is related to how many of each should be made. Thus, let's take a moment. Let x equal the number of gaming computers, and y equal the number of basic computers. Now again, it may seem like a waste of time to put these down, but it will help you stay organized. It's a good idea. So we're all set up to tackle this problem, and let's get started. We're back to the question and we look at it and see that she makes up to 80 computers per month. So the number of gaming computers plus the number of basic computers, or x plus y, has to be less than 80, our first inequality. Back to the question. And we see that she can put in up to 240 hours per month. Now, each gaming computer takes six hours to build, so the total time working on gaming computers would be 6x. And the basic computer takes two hours to build, so the total time on the basic computers would be 2y. And you add those together and it has to be less than 240. So that's our second inequality. A couple of extra constraints for our system would be x has to be greater than zero and y has to be greater than zero. That is, we can't make a negative number of either computer. Makes sense. We've established our system of inequalities. So back to our question, and we see that we have a little more information. This is our profit information. Anne makes $120 for each gaming computer that's sold and $80 for each basic. So we can make a profit equation as P equals $120 per gaming computer times X plus 80Y for the basics. And we add those up and that's our profit. Now this isn't an inequality and it has that extra variable P for profit, so we won't be graphing this one. We'll just save it for our final analysis. Okay, so our next step is to take our new system of inequalities and make a graph. So let's go to Desmos. We enter all of our inequalities right into Desmos, and then we look at our graph. And we see that this is our allowable region right here. The next step is to label and identify our vertices. Let's call them A, B, C, and D. And reading the locations from our graph for each point, A is found at 0, 0, that is a situation where she makes no computers. B represents no gaming computers, but just 80 basic computers, 0 and 80. C is where she makes 20 gaming computers and 60 basic computers. And finally, D is where she only makes gaming computers, 40 of them. Within our four points here, we have our maximum and minimum profits. So let's determine which is which. So taking our vertices and taking our profit equation that we established before, we can determine the profit at each one of these points. Plugging in the numbers for point A, we get a profit of zero. And that makes sense. If she doesn't make any computers, she won't be making any profit. The profit for point B, that is making all basic computers, well, plugging those numbers, $6,400. Much better. Now the profit for a combination here at C, 20 gaming and 60 basics, 
plugging in those numbers, we get $7,200. And finally, for point D, that is all gaming computers, we get a profit of $4,800. Now, recognizing our minimum profit now is easy. Zero for not doing any building. Our maximum profit, $7,200. And that's accomplished by doing 20 gaming computers and 60 basics. A good thing for Anne to know when she plans her next month of building. So we've solved our problem, but let's return to the graph and analyze things a little bit here. We have our profits plotted on each of the vertices. Now we can get a good view of it. So whatever she decides to do in a given month, it all falls somewhere into this allowable region here, within our constraints. For example, it could be any one of these points here. They all fall within those constraints. Also, we know that her profit will always be between zero and a maximum of $7,200 for any given month. And we also know that if she's only going to build one type of computer for a month, better off to build those basics.